Hi friends, my name is Monica King. I'm the founder and CEO of Innovators Fox and on the mission to unlock creativity for all in the workplace. <laughs> With COVID-19 spreading around the world, I knew how important it was to do everything I can to help spread positivity, message of hope, knowing that with science and research, how our brain and the way we think is impacted by what we consume. And so knowing that on the media, there were a lot of negative information, fear-driven information that made us hesitant, anxious, uh, and it got me curious even for myself, what are things that I can do to help stay positive, hopeful, and also thoughtful. And so these stories I hope would inspire you. Uh, I've had fun interviewing all these friends around the world and new friends' friends and asking them the serious questions. What is something that helping them stay creative? What's something that they wish, that they hope to see changing in the next five years and even 20 years because of this event? And so stay tuned and hear these stories and let me know what has helped you and perhaps bring a new smile and finding hope in where you are right now. And so subscribe today and tell me more. Thank you for being here. I hope, yeah, I hope that you have, I hope that you have a plethora of these coming up because we really need, like now as a result of sitting this conversation, I feel better, you know, I feel happier. And now I'm going into our day and our next conversation, like sitting in this place of positivity. I'm really grateful. I think uh, the ability to uh, just adapt and be flexible. We can connect virtually with anybody in the world. Oh, yes. Finding a lot of gratitude for this. We are constantly practicing my gratitude. Family and my child. Well, what else can you None do? None of us signed up for this in January. I think it's a very different type of crisis that we're facing now. But the thing is, we've all faced different crises in the past before. At the core of who I am is servant leadership. And I think we have to think like that, right? <laughs> What brings me joy? Well, that's the question in everybody's mind right now, isn't it? Uh, it changes day by day. It's doing crazy 80s dance parties with my five-year-old. CrossFit or any form of fitness, to be honest, will give me is that mental fortitude. Just focus on what you can handle. I think it's a struggle every day. I'm naturally curious anyway, uh, but to keep it remains so, I read a lot self-compassion. I think the main thing is to really just accept that you can't control everything and just to really lower your expectations of yourself as well. Uh, I'm very careful about what I read and where I read. Uh, I don't believe everything I see or hear. Every single night I have been joining what I call the meditation crew. Understanding like where where I am and where my family is in relation to the larger world. Previous background of being a breast cancer survivor. And so you think about all of these things, you know, in, in your life that you could be negative about, but we've got to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and keep moving. That doesn't mean I don't have bad days. So when I do, I call my tribe. And just dancing, jumping, moving, because it's harder um, for us to get out and really burn off a lot of steam and get outside and exercise. And that that gives a lot of joy. There have been times when, uh, when you try to control more than you can. Uh, and, and that's because you have the right intentions. You want to do stuff the right way. The number one thing is gratitude. And rather than just getting through it and staying the same, like not letting you wear it down, instead you let it bring you even higher than before. <laughs> With low key sort of cake thingy. That brought me some joy. My dad's. It makes my kid happy. So for me personally, I have a two-year-old daughter, right? Being able to break up my day by going and coloring for 10 minutes with her. You know, it just keeps me uh, above the water. It's, it's, you know, I talk a lot to friends. Uh, I, I follow your show. I think this is, it's, it's actually one of the, the, the ways that I just, I, just stay, I just stay above the waters. I call them, I admit that I'm having a bad day because I'm human. They give me the safe space to have a bad day but they don't let me wallow in it. How can you help someone else even if you're stuck at home? How to, how to be with yourself, how to be mindful, how to find joy. There's a brighter day coming. Really just focusing right now on what really matters and focusing on the person that you want to be on the other side of this. There you go. <laughs> oh, wow. So the wine glass and champagne. And I honestly believe that one silver lining that's going to come out of this is that we will have an entire generation 
of children that are going to take an increased interest in science and technology and turn to innovation as a way to solve the world's problems. So, so these are the, the two kiddos that bring a lot of joy. What will be the impact after the health impact? What is the economic impact, the social impact? What people will be impacted the most? And this is my little garden. And then ask, how can I help? What can we do? It's a very good learning from my dad, who used to be a trauma surgeon. He, he was, he's a general surgeon, uh, but he used to treat trauma. And uh, it's like a trauma surgeon. You know that there is a high chance that the person that you're treating might not make it, but you give it your all and you don't get disheartened if it doesn't work out because you know that you gave it your all. Uh, I think I laugh every day at my kids. Uh, they're in like their giggly laugh phase, so it's just cool. Uh, you know, you try to laugh to make them laugh. We do a handful of different three to five minute meditations and I am currently on day 24 of doing that. And I have actually never meditated consistently, never expressed gratitude or journaled consistently. So I'm finding new behaviors in this period of quarantine giving me joy. We have five kids ages two to nine. Um, even though we are physically isolated, it is our duty to not practice social distancing. So, so we teach physical distancing, but it's very important for us to maintain social connections because that's the only way that we're going to survive. What's really important to us and what are some things socially and that we are not going to choose to re-engage in once we come out of this? You know, when I go out, my friends or my colleagues or my associates see a different person, a better person. Number two is empathy. I think really not feeling alone in this and then related to that connectedness. Um, so amazingly, even though I live alone, I've never felt less lonely and more connected to people. I, I hope that people learn that there is a distinction between being alone and being lonely. I have these creative ideas boiling in my brain, so this is the perfect time actually for me to uh, go deep with them. That we really see the value of human connection in all its forms. So there is a reason why health tech moves slowly. Uh, AI or machine learning in, in terms of clinical trials, how do you think about uh, really robustly testing those things out. You don't want another paranoia to happen. Don't put something without a plan, but also don't stay, but also like take a risk that's calculated. This is my spirit animal. I hope that when we catch up in 2025, the museum is just working every day. I hope we don't just go back to the world as is. Pandemic has definitely forced or be given the opportunity for more collaboration. There are a lot of inequities. There's a lot of issues. And you, um, voting, voting, voting students above anyone not, above No, not just team. voting, organizing. That we have really creative leaders. I mean, we were only able to be open for 18 days before we closed our doors. You know, it was 17 years that the National Children's Museum didn't have a permanent home in downtown DC. And then we finally opened and 18 days later had to close because of this. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. So this is a shirt that I, I love to wear at home. It's the one of the major sponsors in the Disney Cars movie, which is my son's absolute favorite movie. So we've watched it hundreds of times. And That I got at the Chengdu airport. Mindfulness. Um, Just taking small steps to try to make a positive plus from that experience. Happiness is 40% controlled by our thoughts. Great question, Monica, great Every question. Every day, I, um, so, we try to really keep it fresh. I'm really proud of what we've been able to do right now. Don't today. force yourself or your kids or whoever is around you to be positive, to be a son of sunshine. No, it's good to see you. Um, I think there is no right or wrong way to use this time. It's really just about trying to show up if you're not thinking beyond yourself right now, right now when people are dying. Yes, I need to be grounded more, but this eagle is grounded, right? So it's a reminder, it's like come back to earth, like don't stay in the air too long. <laughs> Every life matters because that's somebody's mom, that's somebody's child, that's somebody's some, you know, loved one. If not now, then when? Try to shoot high and see what you can accomplish every day. And if you don't hit the mark, just let yourself off the hook. Box of gloves, that brings me a lot of happiness. It's important 
to understand who are you spending time with, right? 2025, where we meet down the road is like, look how much um, we are able to accomplish in terms of taking care of people because of female leadership. <laughs> and also this is the creativity, which is now unleashed. Now they are a creative team ready to solve problems. I love that question. You, you, you know how it is, like we just have like this to-do list that's just kind of running in the back of our minds. So I think just listening and just being there and- Are inventing games and activities. Intentionally understanding where you want to be at the end of this, right? And what you want to accomplish and what you want to be known for after this. Albeit on two different screens at the same time. <laughs> I have always wanted to launch a podcast where I talk to some of my amazing friends like you. Uh, I use it as a Pomodoro timer. I think listening and being present is something that was sort of missing. In on um, to be super productive, like seriously, what we're going through is unprecedented. To uh, abstracts. Oh gosh, what do I, what am I, not hope, what am I going to say at that time? Because I am convinced that I am going to say it. We are going to talk about how we survive this, how the worst days are behind us, how we are living in our new normal, but still being um, humane to each other, still being kind to each other. Everyone reevaluates their life, you know, and just be like, what is important? So, I mean, again, as long as your needs are met, by Laura. Huh? And so I hope people recognize now that there's a secret sauce that makes organizations and teams really work at their best. And that's not something that comes at a policy level or at a micromanagement style. So my hope is that we can pause and really reconsider what are these systems that we have in place, government-wise, culturally, societal-wise, that we really need to question. This is where basically I put down all the ideas that I come up with. Uh... You know, on a global scale, like Boris recently wrote an article about how um, the countries with the best response to coronaviruses have are, are led by what's well, the most common thing, and they're led by female leaders. Creativity, like really focusing on how to develop the mind. Things aren't as important anymore. Um, the trips that we needed to take or that specialty brand of something that was meaningful to us. Being in a position of service and helping others is the one thing that has given me the most joy. Even if that means just like hopping on a call and just sitting there and just listening to them like. I hope that we are all still as connected as we are now. And realizing that the actual issue is trust and culture and these are things that not a whole lot of organizations actually invest in. They invest in productivity and ways of getting things done. Uh, I think one thing also is like not to use this time to try to change something they can't change that is beyond their control. A lot of different things that, uh, without any judgment, people valued are being reshifted because people are dying, people are getting sick, and we are all in our own ways making sacrifices. Use what they know, uh, what they have, and what is available to create and build something. How would society have transformed in that time? So be, be who you really want to be. Remove like... some of the layers and pick up some of the hats that we have. Incredibly proud of what our team has done to have a sharper analytic lens when it comes to moments like. So that. you didn't ask me about being profoundly colorblind. And I shouldn't be a chemist because I was told you can't be a chemist if you're colorblind. I was certainly told you can't be an artist. And I was also told you can't join the military. Again, be gentle with yourself. Have compassion for yourself. Um, I spent nearly 10 years in the military as a reservist and did very well there. Uh, I'm now a successfully selling artist with my works going all over the world. And I now, I'm not just a chemist, I lead a team of chemists. Um, so yeah, you didn't ask me about being colorblind. There you are. <laughs> Fully and mindfully um, every moment of the day and, and give yourself permission to sit down and breathe. And they are not the same. You're gonna make it through this. If, if not now in the face of this pandemic that is impacting every corner of the world. The great pause. When will you choose to lead with humanity? And when will you choose to Very love Very small people? things that change our lives. You have to find something to dig yourself out Being of it. Seen by investing time in 
my creativity. I am more thankful for... So I love languages. Naive children. Give you that an opportunity to not be who you are supposed to be, but really be You asked a lot of great really questions. Well, how can I, I turn this problem into an opportunity? And be prepared, it's going to be a hugely bumpy ride. Is I give some of my artwork away for free. So, what do you think? I hope these messages, just like how it has been for me, enriched you. Know that it is a journey. We are here for a marathon. And by being courageous, finding hope, finding positivity in the small steps we do, whether it's asking yourself, when was the last time I laughed out loud? When was the last time I was grateful for something? This is just some of the, like, that's just like a compilation. And I have a little cat who loves going out. And again, it's okay to have a bad day. These are small milestones that we can do every day to pace ourselves, to explore how we reimagine our future together. And so thank you very much. I hope these stories have brightened your day and added you in how you can stay courageous today, wherever you are with creativity to rethink your future. So this is Monica Kang from Innovator Spots and let me know what other things you would like to see and how we can brighten the day. Um, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, here's my neighbor sending me a picture. We gave her tulips and then we gave her tulips and the muffin and this is where she said, you know, the best, best. Yes, so it looks like this. Regardless of what their skin color is and where they're from or whatever perceptions you may have of them, because this thing has the ability to come get you and somebody you love, it does not discriminate. And so I, I really hope that all of us can come away from this with a little bit more empathy, a little bit more patience. Yeah, no pressure, right? <laughs> Thank you. Do you mind if I ask you the same question? I know it's not the format. I wanna know kind of from you, is there, is there like a skill right now you're working on? So actually this whole video thing, and video editing is a skill I've never done before this. Wow. So, do, so you do all your all of your editing and kind of I everything by myself, self doing. Thank you. I did. Thank you so much, Monica. You're the best. I appreciate everything you're doing. You you don't know who's going to be inspired by what you're doing, because um, you know inspiration is to me is, is a compounded effect. You know, it's not linear. Um, and for those of us who who put stuff into the internet or the universe and we don't know who actually listens or watches it. Um, that's not our job to figure it out, right? Our job is to create the content that we wish we had, that we think we're gonna make a good impact in the world. And, um, you know, maybe a younger version of Monica somewhere, a younger version of Jerry is gonna change their entire perspective on life from watching this or the tens of thousands of other things that are coming on daily from those of us who wanna make a positive impact in the world. So thank you for what you're doing. I think this is fun.